we found out that we had the capability within our organization, we had the people with the right skills and the knowledge to do things that were user-centered, design-focused, and we realized that the cost was not the problem. Because even though things took a little bit longer to begin with, we realized in the end that we were saving time once things were launched. Because we didn't need to redesign things when we saw problems way too late. So then, only the awareness remained. Once we had the awareness needed to focus our efforts toward user-centered design, we could just get right at it. So what is user-centered design? It is a design philosophy that puts the user at the center of all design decisions. It is an approach to design that consists of a wealthy toolbox of disciplines and methods. And even though the toolbox is wealthy and has a lot of disciplines and methods, a good user experience practitioner knows when to use each and every one because you don't use all of them all the time. The highlights of user-centered design is that it's a series of disciplines and methods used to aid us in design. It focuses on the user's needs, their behaviors, and their goals during all phases of the project. And it, and it ensures that the user requirements, opinions, and feedback are all taken into account throughout the process. And its main purpose is producing a product that customers will like and understand better than if they weren't consulted. So the ultimate goal of user-centered design is to ensure the user, user's experience of a system, product, or process is as good at, as it can possibly be. It looks to realize this goal by considering the user's perspective during all phases of the development lifecycle. So what is this user experience that seems to be the heart and soul of user-centered design? Once you catch the user experience bug, there's no way to get away from it. You're constantly thinking about it. Suddenly, doors stop, start facing the wrong direction, and you're constantly saying things like, why didn't they think about the user experience of this coffee machine? It's like the guys that work in post-production doing special effects for movies. When they're going to the movies, they can't just watch the movie for its story anymore. They're seeing things like, Oh, I wonder how they rotoscope those wires out. Or what lens flare package is that? So these things start to look in a different light, but it is an exciting uh, area to look into. Now, user experience design was the role that we needed within CCP to improve our design efforts. It was the missing ingredient in our kitchen to make our food great and not just good. User experience design is the umbrella that encompasses all aspects of a product, its content, form, visuals, sounds, behavior, structure. Usability is one of many fields that contribute to user experience, but it's just one of many. And in the past, we focused solely on usability issues. When we're thinking about UI design specifically, we have these different areas that we feed into the UI design that then goes to the user. Interaction design, information ar architecture, human-computer interaction, human factors engineering, and usability, of course. But before we start looking into the UI design, we should be thinking about the user experience design, the overall experience. And that has many more fields. When we started looking into user experience, we realized that there was a lot of things that feed into it. But we also realized that many of these fields actually exist already within our organization, within different disciplines. So the only thing we needed to do was focus our efforts collectively towards the user experience of the user. So these are the different disciplines within the company. And in the areas where we are collaborating between the disciplines, it kind of merges together. For example, the technology, the engineers, and the design, the designers. When we're collaborating, we're working on the interface. And where all these disciplines merge, that is where the user experience happens. 
And we needed to think about user experience overall because people aren't just experiencing Eve the client or Eve the game. They're experiencing Eve the universe. And there's many more mediums than just the client where they experience the game or the universe. So when I was talking about us focusing on usability in the past, I'm going to give you an example of designing a road. When the road is only supposed to be usable, uh, it's going to be wide and straight, and it's going to enable the driver to go from point A to point B as fast and as efficiently as possible. But when you're thinking about a road that's going to be high, has, have a high level of user experience, then it's completely different. Then you're thinking about the scenery, the smells, and things that stimulate the driver's emotions. The road may take twists and turns, not being as direct as the usable road, but it's a more meaningful and enjoyable experience while it lasts. So for example, when you guys were driving from the Keploik uh, airport to Reykjavik, we made a lot of effort to ship all those uh, rocks from the moon so that you can view them outside the window. It's a lot of effort, but it was worth it, right? But it's an ongoing process. User experience design isn't just a checkbox and then we move on. It needs to be integrated into everything that we do. So how did we integrate it? When we started talking about this within our company, people were worried that we wanted to shift our focus from the things that we were uh, heavily focusing on before, which were mainly the system goals. Things like, is it functional, useful? which means it works as programmed, or is it ri reliable, which means it's available and it's accurate, and is it usable? It can be used without difficulty. But as you can see here, it's a triangle, and these are the foundations. So we're not forgetting about them, we're still using them, if not even more than before, but we're adding to them these user goals. And there are things like, it's convenient, it's super easy to use, and it works like I think. It's pleasurable. It's a memorable experience worth sharing. It's a big one. And it's meaningful. It has personal significance. So the thing is that if you don't have the system goals, people won't stay, stay for more than a few hours or, or maybe a few days for the most part. But in order to keep your clients for months, even years, you need to hit on these user goals. And a lot of these user goals are already filled within our game today, but it's mainly because of the players themselves. They're filling it with their own interaction between each other. But we wanted these goals also to be filled in terms of the UIs and, and uh, game designs that we do. So we needed to stop thinking abstract. Stop saying, what functionality should the feature provide? What if someone might need to do something? or the system needs these elements to complete this function. So we needed to stop thinking about things from, from the system's point of view, or just looking at users as a group of people with uh, vague ideas of what their needs and wants were. We needed user-centric thinking. We needed to say, what functionality are our users expecting? Which user goals should this feature support? And how can we make it easier for John to do this action. And now, when I said John, it's not this John, because this is John Lander, the senior producer of EVE Online, and then we would just be doing what we always did. No, it's more like this John, a typical user that obviously has some needs and wants and knows exactly what he wants. And we want to know how we can serve him better. But it, it isn't just about listening and doing what the users say. It's about listening to the message behind what they say. We are observing their behavior and analyzing their state of mind. Because we need to look at what they're really asking for. A quote here, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said, faster horses. So back in the day when they didn't have cars, that's probably what people would have said if you asked if, if someone want to get faster between two places. 
They just wanted to get quicker around. So instead of giving them faster horses, uh, Ford Motor Company invented cars. And traditional user feedback, the problem with, with it is that people will say one thing, but they mean another, or they'll say one thing, and they actually do another thing. So we have to evaluate the user in action to actually see what the problem is and know better how to solve it. And we have to think about these three things. We can't take content and context out of the mix. So we're thinking about the users, which are you guys, the EVE players, the content, which is EVE Online, and the context, the vision that we set out, our culture, what technology allows us to do, and the resources and constraints that we have. And when we started discussing this within CCP, people said, well, what about our agile development process? What's gonna happen to that? Well, the thing is that we're not changing the development process. It stays the same. We're just changing the way we think when we're designing things and how we evaluate it. So we keep our cycles, we keep our sprints, we keep everything the way it is. We just change the way we work, change the work methods. There are four phases of user-centered design. And this is not really helping me to explain that it's an easy process, but it's a fun graph to look at. So I'm gonna show you in a little bit easier way. First phase is the analysis phase. Then comes the design phase, implementation, and finally, deployment. Now the interesting thing is that the deployment phase is actually just as big as the other ones. So we're not just deploying for one or two days and then looking through the forums for some feedback and then hoping to have time to do some last minute changes and then moving on to the next project. We're looking at the de develop deployment phase as a whole development cycle for maybe one or two sprints. So if we look a little bit into each of these phases, the analysis phase, we start with meeting with the stakeholders and setting a vision. And then we define usability goals and objectives so that we know what we want to get out of it first. We conduct field studies to know which areas we want to improve or how we want to go about doing things initially. And we look at what other guys are doing, the competitive products around us. And we create personas using user profiles and scenarios. And this is to target better our users, finding out what kind of person we're trying to do our feature for. And then in the design phase, we start doing things like brainstorming design concepts, do screen flows and navigation models, and walkthroughs of design concepts. Most of these things we've done before, but the new thing that comes into the mix is that we're Frequent prototypes start off with that because then we're constantly changing it. We want to mold the clay a little bit first, and then once we see through a few user testing sessions where we're going, then we have a design to document. And then we move into the implementation phase. And there we do heuristic evaluations, which I'm gonna explain in the next slide a little bit more. And we work closely with the engineers. So the engineers and the designers are really co-designing and co-implementing. And as soon as we have something implemented, we wanna try it on, out on users. And we wanna see how the users react to it. We wanna observe how they do things, and if there's something wrong, we actually see it with our own eyes, and then we know what to do to fix it. And then we iterate on the implementation. And then we update the design documents because we've done changes here, and we need the design document to be accurate because our quality assurance department 
relies on the design document to know if things are implemented the cor correct way. Now a little, about, little bit about heuristic evaluation radar. There are hundreds of these available and you pick the one that you think fits the best for each project. So this one, for example, which I've taken here is one that is known to be good for uh, knowing an ov overall uh, user experience quality of a project. And there are multiple uh, information and, and checklists to get to uh, the information you need to know w where you should score each of these categories. But there are edge cases. For example, in game design, if you're creating a new feature that's supposed to be exciting and mysterious, You don't really use the blue. And then finally in the deployment phase, we do user surveys to check how the feature is working out and we watch closely and evaluate user reaction. So we're actually listening on the forums, uh, even though we sometimes have to drink a few beers before we can read them. But um, we go in there and we see what you guys are saying. But we can't just listen to that and go straight into uh, fixing it like we sometimes did in the past, very off uh, compared to the end result that we have, then at least we know the difference. We know where we started and then we know where we ended after getting the valuable input from users. And if we compare that, then we can learn a lot the next time around. So if the same team works together again, we might be able to skip all those issues that we had in this time around. And then of course, when you have a lot of improvements, you have to scope them down and pick the ones that matter the most. And it's good to do that uh, you know, user-centric. So it should be the ones that matter the most to the users. And we're continuously analyzing throughout this phase. So user testing seems to be like the main thing here. And it was the main thing for us. It was the main change within the company. Doing user testing and doing a lot of more often and doing it early, very early in the process. Not doing something and then putting it out on CC and then when people start raging about something, it was really hard to do a 180 degree change on something when it's already out on CC. It's been fully designed and fully implemented. So we needed to do it earlier and we needed to do simple things. Because if you're doing too complex of uh, test then you need to include so many people that it comes uh, unmanageable. So you want to do just simple things that you can collect a few people that are involved with the design and implementation of that uh, one thing and they can just evaluate it through a live session and then go right at the doing the changes. So we're doing simple things and we're doing them more often. That's what's working out best for us. And some usability experts have found out that testing only one user early in the process is better than testing 50. So again, when we were testing things out on CC and getting hundreds of feedback, uh, they were you know, just a little bit too late in the process. And when you're doing it really early and you have very simple things, you can just test it on one person and it will give you very valuable results. And it's also been found through studies that it, you don't need more than five people to uncover up to 80% of the high level problems. So we don't usually have these sessions uh, with uh, you know, multiple people, five at the tops and that gives us a lot of information and we just do it again and again. And the type of methods that we use 
We have focus groups. It's really good when we get a lot of people into a room together to discuss a new feature or a concept, and we see how they tackle it and interact with each other. Because a lot large part of our game is the human interaction, and we want to see how people solve it verbally between themselves. And we record that session. And then we have uh, traditional usability testing, which is us evaluating users, usability testing something, and we record that as well. And card sorting can be valuable when we're doing new uh, things that have to do with information architecture, like menu systems and new categories of some sort. And then participatory design, which is an, a really interesting concept. It's where users and designers come together to figure out a design together. And we're actually going to have a session on this today in a user experience uh, uh, roundtable at 6 o'clock, where you guys can actually sit down and do game design uh, with us. So that's going to be interesting. And then we do questionnaires. We can be really good to uh, see if we've mapped out a user with uh, a certain persona. So maybe we've created a, a certain persona, and we think that there's a user that we're trying it out on that fits that persona, but then through the questions that they answered, they seem to fit something different. And this is valuable for us to know when to change our strategy in terms of finding users and comparing them with the persona that we made. So even though we do this wrong a couple of times, it's always one step closer to doing it right eventually. And then we have these one-on-one -on -one sessions, these detailed interviews where we kind of dive more into the wants and needs of a user. And all of these are recorded through a specialized user testing uh, equipment or, or software that we use. And like you see in the middle picture here, we have, the, we have the session, we have the participant, and then we have shot of the client itself in a big picture. And then there's a timeline underneath. And this timeline includes all the observation marks that the different uh, developers have put in. So they're all looking at this while it's running live on their own version of the client. And they can put in these observation marks as they see something that they want to uh, investigate further. And this is the engineers, the designers, and various people on the team that then can go right after the session and just act on this. So instead of doing what we've maybe done in the past, where we've done some uh, specialized user testing or user surveys, and then collected a lot of data and put it into these big packets, and then somebody gets it handed off and he's supposed to work with it later. This is just something that we do on the fly, live, with no paperwork. But we can also make, make these graphs, and we can also study it further later. But the main benefit is just watching it live and acting on it right afterwards. But the way we do these graphs is that we basically key point where the users are doing their tasks. So if this user is doing a task uh, at a certain point in the timeline, and then another user is doing it in a, another point, we mark that in so that we can compare, and we give those uh, tasks that they do in the timeline a certain grade, depending on how well they did. And then we see in the graph afterwards you know, how we can compare those results. So if we see that four out of five users uh, can't find the new button that we put in. That's a problem. And the biggest misconception that companies think is that they have a choice to invest in their user's experience. And today, it's basically a survival, uh, matter of survival thing. It's become a huge part of the industry. And people just want things to work as they think. Because experiences, they will happen, whether or not you plan them or not. But when you don't plan them, there's a much more like likelihood of it not being good. So one of the things that we did to focus our efforts more on user experience within the company was form a community of practice around user experience. And this was open to anyone within the company, because you don't necessarily have to have a spe specialized uh, expertise or a role within the company to want to know more about user experience. 
And like I, in the graph that I showed you before, there are so many uh, disciplines that are affected by the user experience that the more people want to be uh, involved, the better. And this is going well. There's a lot of people and, uh, that have a lot of interest in this. So I want to tell you about two roundtables that we have today. One is the user interface of EVE. It's going to be at 5 o'clock in the roundtable room one. And the other one is user experience, the participatory design session. It's at 6 o'clock in the same room, roundtable room one. In the UI session, we're going to show you a video about our pr past, present, future, and fantasy work. And then we want to get your input on where you think our UI should be going. And in the user experience session, we're going to focus on improving the user experience of combat in EVE. And we want you guys to sit down with us and co-design that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick teams you know, depending on how many people show up, it could be a few teams. And those teams pick a topic that's combat related, and then they write down their ideas on those topics. And then you present those ideas within the team. And then, when everybody within the teams knows kind of what each and every idea is about, then the team members themselves group these ideas together to see if they can find a common ground on some of them and give a category that kind of describes those idea collection uh, the best. And then you choose only two categories that you want to focus on and elaborate on further. And then once you've done that, everyone presents those two ideas to everyone within the room. So if we have four teams, we're going to have eight wonderful ideas on how to improve combat. And of course, CCP is going to do something really valuable with those uh, ideas. We're going to, of course, not throw them away. We're going to take them and evaluate them. And then, hopefully, they end up on a backlog somewhere. Because we are focusing our efforts on improving combat in the following months. So that's it for me. If anyone has any questions, uh, you can come up here, talk into the mic. <laughs> yeah, they're clapping for you. I'm not sure if you actually uh, would have done any of this, but back at Columbia, we were experimenting with gaze tracking software for usability testing. I was just curious if you guys had done that at all or if you were planning on doing that at all. Um, it sounds like an interesting thing. I'm, I'm sure I would be interested in it. I haven't done it myself. You use infrared cameras while somebody is using your software to tell where they are pointing their eyes while they're using it to see where they're trying to go to get the information or where they're trying to go to use your product. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting field, and um, I've seen uh, you know people use it for different purposes. I saw a uh, a racing game once that used it, and I thought it, they were doing it to improve the game for the player, but they were just trying to figure out where they should put the advertising signs. So, you know, when the player was looking to the side, make sure that the advertising sign was in the right place so he would <laughs> spot that, so. Hey. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, uh, does the sort of sandboxing nature of EVE make, uh, present special difficulties for user experience design? Because, I mean, at the lower level of, of um, <coughs> individual tasks, like shooting a spaceship, obviously there's, there's great scope for honing that. But with the, at the higher levels of the sandbox of people activities, obviously you can't plan the whole user experience. One of the attractions of EVE is, you know, it's yep. kind of unplanned at the higher yep. levels. Yeah, you're right. And this is a big debate. Uh, thing is that it's, a, it's an iterative process. You have to do it like, you know, again and again. So when you have something like a sandbox game that users use in a certain manner, uh, you know, you evaluate how they use it, and then you try to improve the way they, they figured out how to use it. So, for example, um, you know, cans, when they got shot into space to put your ore into it, that wasn't actually designed originally. That's just something that the players found out how to do. 
Now, once they started doing it that way, maybe you know, improving how that is done is something that we can do to improve the user experience because the players are actually creating the user experience. We're just improving it the way we see that they want to do it. Yeah. Hi, is there a, a program in place for the users to get in, uh, the users to start getting involved early in the prog uh, project that you're working on? So become a user tester. Right. Yes, that would be an optimal thing. Um, I would love for that to happen. We have all kinds of programs. We have some uh, you know, research and statistics uh, teams within our company that looks to uh, you know, get some feedback from users. We send them user surveys and they're usually really helpful on those things. And because this is uh, you know, a new concept for us and we are just in the development of, of implementing it within the company, uh, we just haven't gotten to that yet. But it's definitely something we should be doing. And hopefully, you know, next year we'll just have like a, we'll skip the PVP thing and you can all just user test something, right? Uh, just. All right, everyone spent. Thank you very much for coming.